Complications from diabetes are frightening and dangerous, but they can be avoided. Today, an ounce of prevention. I'm Ron Caparelli, and this is House Calls. On today's edition of Living with Diabetes, we look at the many complications diabetes sufferers can face. Picture a future where you could be blind, need a kidney transplant, or might have to have your leg amputated. Well, that's the reality for thousands of people living with diabetes, a complex disease that affects your entire body. Unchecked, this disease can harm your eyesight and other vital organs, which is why avoiding complications associated with the disease is so important. LifeScript's Chief Medical Officer, Dr. Ed Gear, is here with Straight Talk on diabetes complications. Ed, good morning. Good morning, Ron. Okay, so lots to talk about here. Let's jump right in. What okay. are some of the complications that diabetes sufferers have to worry about? Well, the worst ones really are the ones that affect the eyes, the heart, and the kidneys. So you do begin to lose your eyesight and can lose it altogether. Heart, it can lead to heart failure and heart attacks, cardiac arrest, and kidney failure. So those are the three classic problems you get with diabetes. In addition, You've heard about wounds that people get on their feet and so forth. It's because they really lose their vascular supply and they can't feel when there's a problem. The nerves are affected also, so they don't have the sensation in their feet if they've got a problem that you or my, I might notice right away. Now, are all of these complications inevitable or is there something you can do about it? Well, you're going to get some complications from diabetes. That is inevitable. However, the severity of the complications can be modified to, to a significant degree by good blood glucose control. Okay. And let's just for a second step back and talk about the two different types of diabetes. There's type A and type B, correct? Well, and the difference really is what? Yeah, so it's really that now the nomenclature is type one and type two. Okay. Type one, which used to be called juvenile onset diabetes, because it typically occurs in teenagers, but can occur even younger than that. Uh, is an autoimmune disorder. That's where your immune system actually turns on your pancreas, the areas in the pancreas that produce insulin, and for some reason attack those very cells. So you lose insulin production. Type 2 diabetes, which we used to call adult onset diabetes, we don't anymore because it now, because of the obesity problem in America, is affecting younger and younger people. So type 2 is where typically it's associated with obesity, and that's where you still maintain some insulin production, but it's not as effective. The cells become somewhat more resistant to its effect and therefore aren't able to um, get the blood glucose into the cells and it accumulates in the body. Now, more prone to complications with type 1 or type 2, what are the differences there? Yeah, type 1 tends to be um, uh, the worst of the two, although you can get the same complications with type 2 that you can get type 1. It's just that type 1, uh, typically the onset is earlier, so you have more years of exposure to high blood, blood sugar levels and so they tend to get worse complications. Now we've all heard the horror stories about people having feet amputated, legs amputated, that kind of thing. Why does that happen and what's the real risk level for that in one type versus the other? Yeah, so they both can lead to that complication, although type one is worse. As I mentioned earlier, you get two effects on, on the legs and feet. One is you get diminished vascular supply, so you get peripheral artery disease. And then the second thing is, is that your nervous system becomes impaired and so your sen sensation of injury or trauma or even a stone in your shoe, you're not going to perceive and it can lead to wounds. Those wounds then don't heal very well because of the poor vascular supply. You get chronic wounds and eventually you may have to have amputations. Now the nerve damage that you mentioned, can that be reversed? There are, unfortunately the nerve damage is not reversible, but you can slow down the progression of the nerve uh, damage through good blood glucose control. Okay, let's talk about men versus women. Any difference in the complications that they face? Any difference in the risk factors? Well, there's some obvious ones. For example, um, women can get gestational diabetes, meaning they get diabetes during pregnancy. Most of the time that just goes away, but it is a complication, obviously. Women are going to suffer that men aren't. Uh, women also get vaginal yeast infections that obviously aren't going to affect men, although men can get throat yeast infections um, that from diabetes as well. Um, women also tend to get more depressed uh, with their diabetes than men, but otherwise the profiles of the complications is relatively the same. 
And what should, what's the number one thing somebody should be looking out for to, to try and figure out, am I developing one of these uh, complications with my disease? Well, the typical um, complications of, or the early warning signs of diabetes, things like thirst, hunger, fatigue, and so forth, are, are present. But the specific ones that indicate a complication um, are really, can be very subtle. So you may notice that um, you get some more blurriness of vision than you might ordinarily. Or you may get to get some chest pain from diminished vascular supply. But most of the complications, unfortunately, aren't noticed. That is, you don't have any symptoms until much later in the, in the disease. So besides keeping in touch with their primary care physician and I suppose an endocrinologist, what other specialists should somebody with diabetes see? Who else should be on the team? Well, for women, certainly, absolutely have your gynecologist involved in the care uh, and um, because it's very important that they know you have diabetes because they're going to check you uh, in a way that uh, they might not ordinarily if you didn't have diabetes. So they're going to be checking for complications of diabetes, infections, and so forth. Um, in addition to the gynecologist, uh, again, if you're having um, uh, problems of the nervous system, a neurologist can help you with those. Um, if you're having heart problems, a cardiologist, obviously, um, and an ophthalmologist, uh, you want to have checking you on a very regular basis to, make, to see how the retina and the eyes are responding to the diabetes. And of course, if you suspect you have diabetes or are going to make any changes to your normal health regimen, you should check in with your doctor first. Absolutely. Don't change a thing until your doctor's on board with All you right. on that Dr. plan. Dr. Ed Gear, thanks. You're welcome. For more information on diabetes, visit our Diabetes Health Center at www.lifescript.com. And be sure to watch our next episode here where we'll examine diabetes myths. For now, I'm Ron Caporelli in Los Angeles. Thanks for watching.